My dad took me to art galleries a lot as a kid, and usually I found myself bored. I would run through all of the art in 10 minutes and then find my dad still at the first piece. As I got older, I developed more of an appreciation for art, but still did not understand how one could spend hours at an art gallery. That is, until I started spending hours at an art gallery. My name is Lucinda Aker, and this is the story of my senior year and how I spent most of it at a nonprofit contemporary art gallery in downtown Albuquerque. Lesson one, read the description. When I first started working at 516, a show called Art Meets History, Technologies of the Spirit was on display. And my first task was to learn about the exhibit so I could answer people's questions as they came in to look at the work. At first glance, none of the art stood out to me. But as I read about where each artist came from and how they each connected with the pieces they made, the more enthralling the room became. And I felt bad that I had dismissed the work before because I developed an overwhelming feeling of love for the pieces that surrounded me. Lesson two, growth in unfamiliar land. Often my project would coincide with what was going on in my day-to-day life, which included a lot of unknown. I was taking a dual credit class that put me out of my comfort zone and challenged me to go beyond my regular art practice. At first, I hated it. Ceramics and textile work were not for me. But as the class went on, I learned to appreciate the act of trusting the process. During this time, I was also thinking about my plans after high school, which is about as unknown as it gets. I came to the conclusion that I wanted to pursue art school and get a degree in graphic design, which leads me to my next project at 516. My mentor, Viola, gave me the task of learning how to use a program called InDesign to rework some of the educational material that 516 had for schools. This was a project that I really fell into, but it also scared me because it was self-directed work and it was something I enjoyed, but learning the program did not come easily. Despite the challenge, I'm thankful for the introduction to the world I wanted to be a part of. Lesson three, it's all about the intention. After my adventures through graphic design world came another project that required a lot of self-guidance. I was set to the task of researching for a valuable project that would coincide with the new exhibit at 516, Migratory with Minerva Cuevas. The project was a book called La Sección Amaria de la Magración, in English, Migratory Yellow Pages. It was structured like a handbook that migrants could use to find resources, art, and information. The research I did for this was finding resources in Albuquerque that could be included in the book. This research and exhibit sparked a new theme that I would see throughout the rest of my time at 516, a theme of intention. Before this, my activism was defined superficially. The mindset was there, but none of what I wanted to do or what I believed in was grounded in action or intention. I got introduced to a world, got invited into a world that I didn't know existed, and I needed it much more than it needed me. Lesson four, how to build a wall, but not like that. The book was not the only work leading up to the show that needed to be done. Before we put in the migratory show, we had to take down the previous artwork. This included deframing photographs, sanding, and painting. Then we could move on to installing. We had to build an extra wall for the space, and I also led the task of installing one of the murals for the show, which was recreating a picture of a wolf made with cookies pixel art style. In all honesty, I had a lot of fun with this for the first six hours, and then I started pulling my hair out. The project made me really insane, but I'm so happy that I was able to contribute. Lesson five, work hard, party harder. A lot of the work that goes into an art gallery is centered around an event. This could be an artist talk, an exhibit opening, or a performance. This was one of my favorite parts of doing my project at 516. I got access to witness a lot of great dialogue and got to meet a lot of people I wouldn't have otherwise met. Seeing people rally together because they really cared about learning and experiencing new things is what felt the most beneficial. 516 is a safe space for people to experience community and art made by creatives historically and currently underrepresented. A great example of this was when 516 hosted a group of musicians part of an organization called One Beat. 
Everyone in this network was from a different part of the world, and seeing them perform was so moving. I really have never seen anything like it. I was constantly being reminded of how important art actually is to the world, because of both its physical representation and also nothing makes people come together like art does. Zines and Community After all of my experiences at 516, I decided to channel everything I had learned over the year into an event that encapsulated my lessons. And what represents community, art, and accessibility more than zines. So I decided to host a zine event. I got to design a flyer, connect with some really amazing artists to come and teach at the event, and most importantly, with some help, I was able to give people a safe place to create whatever they want in a free, accessible way. Overall, the event was a success for me personally and 516 Arts as a whole. Amazing brought in over 300 people to the gallery. So many zines were made and so many people were brought together. Also, a take a zine, leave a zine spot is set up at 516 Arts permanently now. One of the greatest lessons I learned from 516 is that the best way to distance yourself from capitalism is by basing your work in community. A lot of projects I worked on not only gave me soft skills such as research tools and communication skills, but also showed me how to build community and what healthy relationships both in and outside the art world look like.